Good morning and welcome to our monthly webcast. I'm Samir Mehta, your moderator. This is session number 176. We have an exciting case for you, maybe a first where you may see two vessels get simultaneous mini crush uh, treatment. Uh, let's show you this interesting case and take you to the cath lab where Dr. Sharma and Dr. Kinney are standing by. Samin, Anu, good morning. Uh, Yes, good, good morning. morning for Record. a very a very cold uh, weather uh, of the New York City and uh, welcome our uh, all the viewers, uh, global viewers about this, uh, you know, to always try to put some interesting case and this particular, uh, yeah, so this particular case is the first of its kind where we'll try to do a two side branch, two major side branch involved. Uh, in this particular case, and how we are going to deal it with a mini crush technique or uh, we do a step crush, we'll see. So let's, with that note, uh, we start our uh, presentation. Let's go to the, our slides. The usual. Samin, also yeah. congratulations. I mean, this is in record time. You have an installation of uh, uh, an entirely new equipment and room. Fantastic. Yes, a new cat lab within eight weeks. Unbelievable. Eight weeks. Yes. Unbelievable, yes. unbelievable. Now, this is our case number 176. 75-year-old male with hypertension, diabetes, and actually had some event. Uh, last year at the time of prostate surgery, got a pacemaker at that time. Uh, and uh, the otherwise no CAD before, normal EF, and presented with class 3 angina. Stress test was negative, but then did a CT angio, which was positive for multi-vessel disease and high calcium score. And we'll show you there. So patient there had a cath with a two-vessel disease, uh, RC and LED diagonal uh, bifurcation that anomalous circumflex which was normal uh, and uh, this patient uh, will let me show what we did uh, the right coronary was this one lesion and the second lesion and you see the anomalous uh, uh, circumflex right there which was okay and we put two stents in the right coronary uh, patient did fine and now here for the uh, LED kind of you know I you can call it a left main because there's no left main curve. LED and two bifurcation uh, lesions of the uh, two uh, diagonal branches and which are good size see that first the d1 is the large size about three millimeter and then the d2 about 2.5 millimeter and the mid segment is calcium but not that much calcium then there is additional lesion in the mid to distal led our goal is to leave that alone just take care of the proximal led with the two diagonal origin and this is where we wanted to talk today uh, that how we are going to deal with it uh, the second question is do we need any ethroablative strategy although angiographically if i to grade it, I will read it as a moderate calcium. So, I know what is the strategy? Do we make the diagnosis based on the IVAS? Because that's what we have said. You have severe calcium, tram track, you don't need any imaging to make a diagnosis. But in this kind of a hazy area, uh, and uh, like this case, that is there a calcific arc of more than 270 degrees, or we give it a, a calcific score, calcium score of the IVAS or OCT of three or four, which means uh, will require some uh, strategy before you go ahead and just do the balloon uh, and stenting. I think I would just go angiographically, balloon stent. Uh, but no, it's a, was... it looks like to me could be a severe calcium in that area. Because remember, it's very hazy. Should we take one more picture, areocaudal? And we can ask our audience also what they feel uh, in this particular case. Because anytime you see a hazy appearance, it will be eccentric lesion, one. And secondly, it's either thrombus or calcium. And this is a stable case, so the thrombus is unlikely. Uh, so calcium is one of the diagnoses, I would say, interpretation will be less, maybe more RO, RO, RO. I think you need more RO. Yeah, good RO, good, good, good. This is very easy, yeah. Mm. And EF is normal in this case. Don't inject. Go. Yeah. yeah. There's overlap, no good. We go back no, to no, the no, same. No, 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 you see the calcium. Yeah. Okay. So what is the, I think we should do the IVAS. Since IVAS is ready, it's like, you know, uh, all the patients, creatinine is okay, could be OCT, but uh, this we are just going to do. Uh, with the quick IVAS to make the diagnosis that do we need to do one uh, IVL or do I attract me based on what degree of calcium uh, this patient has. So let me just complete our presentation and then while we are just uh, planning, uh, Okay. Go back to the slide presentation only so that I can complete it. 
Okay. So now our plan is patient got two DS, but we start on Prasagul 5 milligram, anybody less than 100 kilo or less than three stents, we give five milligram and we have published uh, our paper in that. And now today is the uh, PCI of the LAD D1, D2 bifurcation and we are saying double mini crush technique. We are, ourselves are trying to look into it that what is the best strategy. This patient will be uh, from ischemic symptoms on one anti-anginal drugs so or beta blocker, diabetic and syntax score is 20. So it's like an intermediate group uh, and so it's appropriate uh, for intervention. So okay. with that note, Anub, tell us uh, what's your plan now. Okay, Nothing. we are ready to do the IVAS now. We will show with IVAS. Okay, let's go to the IVAS. calcium yeah. on the IVAS. Hmm. Prediction, mild calcium. Okay, so mild calcium means less than 180 degree uh, arc and some people define less than 5 millimeter and less than 180 degree arc and uh, 270 and 10 millimeter is moderate. More than 270 and more than 10 millimeter length is severe. Although thickness cannot be diagnosed on IVAS while OCT, you can uh, make the diagnosis of the thickness uh, of the calcium also which come into equation of 0.5 millimeter and 1 millimeter. Okay, so this is where we are now. Ready to do the IVAS of the uh, this segment. There is disease in the mid. Okay. Okay, don't go for the disease. Yeah, 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 yeah. We don't want to touch that. Touch okay. That. Not much calcium there. Yeah, flush like a one quadrant. Yeah, yeah, my flush, yes, yes. Yeah, now I calcium. See some, some Maybe this is a D2. Yeah. Sure. So, I know you yeah. were exactly yeah. right. No, 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 no. Yeah. Lot of calcium here, here. So, so far, yeah, one to yeah. two degrees of calcium. One eighty. No more than no. one eighty. No. That one maybe not even. One. Yeah, this That's is a D1. And approximate LAD. Not left main. Okay. Yeah. So from your point of view, uh, the area of the maximum calcification, is it a more than a two arc, a 180 or less than two arc in any area of that? Like looks like here is that uh, more severe uh, calcium, but it looks is it three, one, four, one three? to two uh, quadrant. I'm sorry, how much? Two, like two one, 180. Okay. Not three, not two, seven, 270. Okay, so this is something which can do a cutting balloon or you want to use an IVL? No, I think cutting balloon. Okay. First, let's do regular balloon, even if you think cutting balloon. Huh? Okay. You want Good. to cut the diag, I can understand. No, the I think LED you can do just a high pressure balloon. Okay. Okay, so, now, so no, let's but go. Tell us the strategy first. Okay, but I, I was is out now. Let's go to the angiogram and let's uh, tell our audience what is the plan now. Play, play your so angiogram. So, we'll wire the, we'll wire the uh, diag, right? Play, play. Yeah, good. Let's play it. Yeah. Okay, wire the dag. Okay, both D1, D2. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and then, then let us uh, pre dilate. Let us have a 3 O, right? 3 O for the LED uh, and 2.25 for the. Yeah. 2 5. Yeah. Oh, you want a cutting balloon? I would what? go 2 5 cutter for the dag. 3 O? No. Okay. Okay. Rio 20. Anu, when you're talking about the cutting balloon, that would be That's both right. for the first five. and the huh? second two diagonal? Five. No, for the D2. Yes, yes. First, right now, no. we will uh, go two. with the uh, 2 5 D2? to the yeah. D2. D2. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And 3 O, we can use for both of them. Or 2 7 5 for diagonal and the uh, LED. Okay, 2 7 5, 20 for the LED. High pressure. Welcoming uh, several people uh, internationally, including. Uh, audience from India and Egypt. Uh, Samin, two questions for you as we yep. proceed with this strategy. First of all, uh, how commonly are you seeing uh, such cases where you have a negative uh, spect uh, MPI and significant coronary artery disease? I would say that at least in uh, uh, about 20%. Or it's in completely normal and severe calcification. So even with the left main. So I say, and that's what the guidelines are, that go with the as a screening test should be CT angio. And right. I'm a firm believer of that. In this particular case, yeah. after the thallium was negative, what yeah. made you go for a CTA? Because patient continues to have angina. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay. It actually, it was done by one of my, uh, uh, you know, referring cardiologists who believe also believed quite a bit in the CTA. He does CTA on many of those cases. Uh, many of his patients who come to us almost 80% no, have a CTA. IFO. And therefore, he didn't believe because of the symptoms and despite the negative stress, MPI, and he has a good exercise, um, uh, the cutting balloon, cutting balloon. 
And the second question is, uh, what was the rationale and thinking behind doing the right first and not the LED? No, it was just basically because the tightest lesion was 90% proximal RCA. Got it. So that was Got it. it. Second, when I saw this picture, which was just done two weeks ago, when I saw this picture, I said, this is a beautiful case of demonstration, knowing that both vessels needed to be done. Uh, we did the RCA, uh, a patient went home, and then brought back for this uh, diagonal bifurcation. So because of the educational, the, the importance of this kind of a lesion, because we encounter these cases rarely, but does happen. And I said, this will be a good case to showcase. And I that's for the region. Yeah. Wonderful strategy. And uh, for the benefit of the audience, we have an excellent uh, cool. teaching case. Yeah. And, and definitely, the, if the tightest lesion, if you take it, down, down, down. the 90% was in the uh, proximal RCA, so just focal lesion. Mid was about 70, uh, and okay. uh, there was a little normal gap. So we put two stents in the right corner. A question from Dr. Nikhil Jha What about doing uh, FFR for the second diagonal? Down. Yeah, I mean, I think the overall, uh, the diagonal, you know, based on those trials, uh, uh, our, uh, at present, uh, the, you know, the 20, kind of uh, equation making a decision making based on the FFR, uh, okay, uh, kind down. of, uh, you know, like no longer practice. Now, we do, after your stenting, that if you want to do, uh, that you, should you do intervention or not, uh, and uh, trying to wire the side branch and see the results is a different story. But, uh, but these kind of lesion, you know, even there was 60% at the ostium after main vessel work, like That's here, see, became significant right far. there. Uh, very significant lesion uh, at the ostium, you can see it there. So question comes is, that, uh, you know, DK Crush 6 showed that FFR guided side branch intervention require multiple wiring, multiple techniques and without any uh, outcome, uh, any positive outcome of the FFR guidance. So therefore, although the for uh, left main, they still, uh, you know, when they, we got the upgrade, updated uh, left main uh, intervention, uh, the you know the report uh, from the jack they did mention that once you are working on the circumflex and if you are doubtful and you want to go with one stent and little hazy then you can decide based on the ffr but i think i in my opinion we have gone away from the ffr now uh, because many of these patients they come back with the chest pain so personally i if uh, angiographically i go more and that is supported by some data particularly dk cross 6 that decide based on your angiogram and uh, in incorporating ffr now that is true that it looks like 90% lesion and you do FFR and FFR will be negative in almost 70, 75% of cases. Those are the data, they are clear cut. We are well aware of it. But only question comes is many of these patients no. continue to have chest pain. You're never sure, should have done okay. it, not done it. So I just go with the angiogram 18, uh, by and large and 20. which is supported by some, uh, some studies. Down. So Anu, tell us what you're doing now. So we did a two sand fight, um, high pressure to the LAD. High pressure, we went 22 atmospheres. Go up. Now, this is a 2.5 cutter. We are going up to 20 atmospheres. So, we did multiple area. You need a long strand to the side branch. Down. 2.5, 23 zions. Mm. Right. 23, longer now. Or 28. Yes. Okay. 28. 28. Go up here. Yeah, 28. Because it's a large, then long leader. We use the same. Down. And, and remember the question comes uh, when you're trying one versus two stent uh, approach, uh, okay. definition trial, and most of the trial have been shown Down. once your lesion Down. length is more than 10 millimeter, that's kind of a tiebreaker. So those cases, you should go with a two stent approach because you'll uh, chances that you'll put a Down. second stent uh, will be much higher. Uh, and we know that in the DK crush uh, five, uh, they were 46% okay, required second stent approach. So my feeling is this is a long lesion of the second diagonal. First lesion is about 15 millimeter. Okay. Uh, and uh, so both lesions are long, uh, which should go with a planned two stent approach. Now, there is a mild disease. This will go with a longer one then, 33. No, no, no. That, I think 28 may cover this. Go up here. I know. I know. I know. We know that. Yeah. That's why I didn't say that. Yeah. Okay, down. Uh, okay. So we want to see 28 versus 33. <laughs> so we are going to use the Zions here. Play, play, play. No, 
33. Zion should be 33. Chinnar yeah. ji is 32. Yeah. What do you think? Okay. Yeah, 32 will, 33 will be okay. Too long. Huh? I think we'll crush. See the length right. of this balloon? Balloon was 6, six right? 6. Six. This is the cutting balloon? 12. Yeah, see? See the length of the cutting yeah, balloon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You I have it? No. Yeah, we Let's have see. It. The lengthwise. 6. 6. Yeah, I think 12. 28 will be okay. 28 is good. Yeah, 28. Now question comes is, mm. and this is the key, Two and let's five. talk about. Let's uh, do the, mm? leave a balloon, crush it and. No, then... my question is mm. that do we uh, uh, prepare the D1 now, leave the wire? No, no, I would not. Then you'll have to have three wires. Leave the yeah. D1, it's sitting quiet. Don't, uh, don't activate it. Yeah. No, but what difference we are teaching our audience today? So just do the first. Uh, you are going to work, but just a step crush or? This one we do step crush. Okay. Anu, why, why, why do you have a hesitation of putting uh, the third no. wire there? It just uh, makes None, the procedure uh, yeah, more yeah. complicated. More one technical. is more, yeah, uh, more complicated with three wires, uh, you know, uh, yeah, intertwangling, right. uh, thrombus formation, exactly. then uh, things, uh, it's not that easy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, balloons everything, coming in and out. Yeah, everything yeah. gets complicated. Yeah, yeah. So I, I would say step by step. You finish your D2. So I mean, in then the go meantime, to uh, or but, uh, I, I can... want to do what? Step crush and then. No, but I, I actually thought, about, let's try to do a two mini crush in with the one main vessel stand. Why not? Let's How? try. It. If it does not work out, do not work out. No, no. What two mini crush? How? The first prepare the D1 lesion. Uh -huh. We do the main the stand in the D2 and stand in the LED. But do the D2 stand. Take everything out. Put a stand in the D1 and then we. Uh, put the D2, uh, D1 stand and then the LED stand. I mean, we are saying that two mini crush will be. Okay, repeat it again. Let's try. Let's put one wire. Get another wire. Yeah, run through will be okay. Uh, so you got it. What we are go planning, whether we are able to do it, I think let's go with this because we have done 2K. The, yeah, they're yeah, good. Run no, through, no, yeah. no, no, no. Run through for what? Okay, D1, which one, what, say. Okay, uh, so no, you repeat what you just okay, said. Okay, let's do the D1 fielder wire. Yeah. Okay, then. So what we are saying is we prepare D1 and D2. And we will put uh, the first, we put a stent in the D2 and stent in the LED. Deploy the stent of the D2, take the wire out and the balloon out. Then we advance the stent in D1. It's not going to go. Yeah, let's try. That's what I'm saying. Let we want to show that if it is possible or not. If not, then we abort it. So, I mean, in yeah. the meantime, fascinating. I've never oh. seen yeah. uh, an active chat group like this. Uh, there wow. are numerous people who have been commenting on uh, uh, mm -hmm. the initial topic we mentioned about uh, negative uh, spec thallium uh, yeah. and. Uh, uh, disease demonstration with the CTA. There are uh, people who have uh, indicated that uh, they trust uh, angina much more uh, in making a decision making. There are people who have, uh, uh, again, uh, fascinating discussions that uh, should there have been a drug eluting balloon available, uh, this case could have been done with a single stent. And of mm. course, uh, there are mentions about... A disabled uh, x-ray, they're saying. Uh, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. it's it's just just fascinating. I yeah. I, I no. am uh, very encouraged by the participation of the audience, yeah. and of course there are even talks about uh, uh, leaving uh, the second diagonal alone, uh, so that uh, if there is an instant restenosis, uh, so all sorts of. Uh, uh, I urge the audience uh, to keep interacting, uh, yeah. and of course uh, several of these areas we'll cover in our discussion. Okay, so let me answer a few of them. Uh, one of them is the extract MPI. So I think that in next five years, the MPI or stress thallium value will become very limited. Uh, right. The number, in my opinion, will become one quarter of what we are now. Why? Because the one making the diagnosis, secondly, as a follow-up. And remember, uh, the post-PCI trial showed routine stress test follow-up is of no value. You do one and two years, that did not make any difference in patient outcome. Second, the, as far as angina is concerned, we know that almost one third of the patients are asymptomatic, yeah, more so the diabetic patients. So in that situation, if you rely only on, 
if you rely only, we're cutting balloon for D1 now, right? Mm. Yeah. If you rely only on angina, so we'll miss large number of population. population. So, and we also learned from the ischemia trial, your ST segment depression and stress test didn't make much difference. So, therefore, coming back to the point, symptom alone are not enough. If you have risk factor, you need to find the coronary anatomy that what the patient has, and that is the CTA. The calcium score plus minus, but I think calcium score gives you some idea uh, where that patient will be. But uh, but key is stress test will go down. Symptom alone, you cannot rely particularly patient who is diabetic, like this particular case. Uh, although this patient has a symptom, so this is a totally different story. And uh, and the role of uh, CT still will remain. Now, only question comes is CT prediction with the FFR, uh, particularly when patient has a, I think you're in a very small branch, that uh, particularly when you have a, a, the high calcium, not able to do CTFFR, otherwise CTFFR is very accurate, but in my opinion, it's like too accurate. So many times, CTFFR okay, is positive by the now time they go to the Now you see how much I'm struggling already, just yeah. with the cutting no, balloon. No, 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 this is cutting balloon will not go because they use cutting balloon, go with the high pressure, you have the 2.5 balloon. No, that's too long. I'm just telling you, we should have bought this right now. Now, if something happens to the D1, then we are all stuck. Okay. There's first, no way. Forget anything. Get a regular balloon. Okay. Let's get cut here and then see if it makes the room. I'm not. Okay. What do you need? A 2.512 or 2.75 12? We High go pressure. with the original plan of D1 and L. No, no, but let's, no, no. But we are just trying to cut the, go with the strategy. 2.5 12 balloon we have? Yeah. No, I, what I'm saying is, is a little atypical approach. But, uh, uh, Samir, we, I answered mo most of those uh, chat questions, right? You answered all of them, but it also encouraged uh, more discussion, uh, mainly <laughs> about the fact that... Uh, what no, no, sorry. Let me, let me complete last one. The okay. drug-coated balloon. Huh? I fully agree. Yeah, I fully agree. Uh, the drug-coated balloon is the good choice in D2. Now, I still have to have the randomized trial of two stent, drug looting stent, and one stent and one side branch uh, that the, with a the drug-coated balloon the, in a large vessel was better. And if anybody wants to put in the chat, an answer will be zero. There has been a no trial of the large vessel side branch comparing the two DES versus one DES and one drug-coated balloon. There are small studies, small vessels, some registry data, but no, no randomized trial. The fascinating uh, discussion further went on that uh, yeah. all the aspects you have mentioned about uh, the greater role of uh, CT becomes even better when you have incorporated Drop. FFR to that. Yeah, absolutely. Down. And actually, now, not only that, now the CT also telling you the lesion morphology Drop. is a necrotic core, positive remodeling, so they're going way beyond in terms of reporting. And uh, th there is a software, uh, just the ha heart flow, which used to do only for Go CTFFR. Now they actually can tell the lesion comply when we know, and that's a part of the discussion I'll be, the type of the lesion, mm. the Down. type of the lesion, uh, which creates a trouble, which is, which is the necrotic core uh, and the positive remodeling. So it can tell you also that which is the lesion which give you trouble. Uh, so not only with the FFR, also the lesion morphology will become part of the routine uh, reporting. Although right now it is done as a protocol basis, but uh, there are few programs like Clearly and so, and uh, same heart flow is having it. So they will give you prediction beyond just FFR that whether this patient, the lesion which we have seen is at a high risk for subsequent uh, event. And that's what I'm going to show few of the, uh, our slide presentations today. That is the lesion morphology. It's not necessarily the degree of stenosis, the lesion morphology is really important in many of these patients. Almost uh, looks like uh, we may be headed towards uh, CT identifying a vulnerable plaque. Yeah, absolutely. Good. Anut, do you want to take a picture, see where we are? Okay, good. So far, so good. Okay, so main vessel will take a 3038 also. Okay, let's go to the D2 stand now. Put a D2 stand. D2 stand is 2.528. Zions. Now, usually you need a 3 stand if you want to put which is a little crazy, I call, nine French guide. We've got eight French, one take three stents. 
and we don't do, uh, uh, you know, nine French guides are not made, even any companies. One time we needed, uh, we had to import one from uh, California. Mm. Good. Okay, let's get a stent in the LED now. 33 is okay, okay. 3 or 3.25, what do you want, LED? I can 3 or. 3 or. Then we, oh yeah. 3 or 33. 28 or 33? Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, give 33. 33. 3 or 33. 3 or 33. And duck-coated balloon trial, I can just tell you, we got a little setback. So, so far, the trial of the magic, uh, sorry, uh, agent, which will be approved agent. soon with the FDA uh, from the Boston Scientific. Yeah, that's okay, also. 33. So no, if further. you have to go from D1 all the way down, maybe. Okay, yeah. So, so key is, so that will be approved soon. And the other trial of the solution and magic touch are ongoing. We are top and roller for the serolumous solution trial. Uh, and uh, the only question is the native vessel. So native vessel solution, uh, you know, uh, they did have initially started, but then some he, somehow uh, was, the, the trial had been halted. Uh, I, I was the only one who did six cases uh, because FDA uh, wanted some more data. So there is no native vessel uh, drug coated balloon trial going on in America, yes, at present. That, that may actually be a very good development because yeah. you may be able to, you know, include more indications. Some die. Yep. Yeah, but a small vessel is not being done at this time. Total halt. Hmm. You want to pull back two millimeter or go to longer? 38 now. Take a picture. I think we'll be okay. Hold on. Which is the side branch? Yeah. You may need 38. Hold on. Okay. Some die. See? Okay, take a cine. Okay. No, no, but if you want to pull, no, don't take a cine because you have to pull back the balloon stent quite a bit in the LED. LED yeah, stent no, can no. come back. The, or, there's no way you will advance D1 stent if you have the stent sticking there. So no, you have no, to, that's what I'm saying. We pull back, otherwise you go to 38. That's why I said. Good, 38. 38. Get a 3 or 38. Take this one out, LED one. And this you're one. Okay, okay with the length for the diagonal? Yeah, diagonal, diagonal actually will push a okay. little further in. Mm -hmm. This there we need go. 38. Yeah. We need to advance it further till we get the D1 stent. Yeah. Then only get it. No, back. it has to cover the proximal D1. The stent has to cover the D1. If you are trying the mini crush, it has to cover the D1. How will you place the D1 stent then? I know. I'm telling you. Let's do it first. We are not inflating the LED stent yet. Mm, and okay. the cutting balloon mm. for D1 was the same 2.5, no? Yeah, but it did not cross. Then we just did a high-pressure balloon. With a okay. 2.75, 12 high-pressure balloon we did. Yeah. So and now we are going with the 38 length in the LED. Because we have to cover both the diagonals and the mid-LED lesion or okay. kind of uh, uh, after the septal. Uh, because you had to have full coverage. We will not deploy the D1 stent, I mean uh, LED stent yet. Uh, till the wire. We do, yeah. No, the question is why mm. was why did you not use a cutting balloon for D1? Then ah. you have to open another, another one. five cutter, yeah. So I think ideally you are right. So it should be the case of the cut. You have to pull back more, way more. Look, uh, more. It's Can we place the stand? No. Then many... only we do it. No, but sometimes your stand no. will not be able no, to pull back. Okay. If ah. it's, cr it's crushed a little bit, remember stand may be pressed against the wall. What I'm saying is pull back the LED stand. We are too far in. I mean, I have yeah. a dozen people on chat having two dozen different techniques. Yep. This is Good. fascinating. Hmm. Uh, no. SS, how will no, you place D1 stand? Yeah, one there. second, one second. Yeah, give a little die. Good. Okay, we are good. Deploy the D2 stand now. No, 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 no. Hold on. D2 stand is not even yeah. in position. Yeah, everything is good now. Do nothing. Okay, some die for the D2. Sine. Take a Sine then. I know you came back a little on the yeah, D2, good. no? Yeah, that's good. Okay. Yeah. That good. looks... Uh... Very good. Because okay, go up for the D2. The question was that if you put a stent 
uh, the, you have to have a position in the main vessel because if the stent is a little bit pressed and crushed by the side branch, you will not be able to move the stent. Okay. So that's Down. why we wanted to have this position. Go up again. Okay, okay good. Uh, then 3 0 uh, 15 the stent. Down. 2.75 or 3 0? What do you want for the 275? 275 15. And the wire out. Now this is the real whole crux of the game. Okay, that whether uh, the stent will go with the stent in the LED. So far looking good. good. Yeah. I think the fact that you have used a longer length uh, uh, helps you navigate uh, the angle for D1. Yeah. But we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. So many suggestions and recommendations. Thank you to all our audience for keeping it so interactive. Yeah. I knew this will generate a lot of uh, discussion, even discussion between us. People are even uh, <laughs> writing anecdotes about uh, similar situations they have had, ah. including uh, a Dr. Robert uh, who's mentioning that uh, I'm going to quote him. I had a double bypass at my LAD D2. Wonder if this procedure could have been done 100% occluded. So, yeah, and I told him, yeah. of course, it is a yeah. possibility. Good. Go. But uh, so now I'm just a little bit skeptical in the sense. Not just a no, little bit. No, because the ostium go. of the D1 had not been opened very well, as you said, yeah. without the cutting balloon. But let's see. I can tell you yeah. there are several people in the audience who are doubting that you will be able to cross into the yeah. first diagonal. <laughs> I am doubting myself too. But let's see. Let us see. Okay. Good. Connect. Connect easily. Connect. Huh? Connect. Yeah. Because of the longer length, I think, of the stent. No, 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 longer <laughs> stent. No, no, LED <laughs> needed to be longer. Yeah. Remember, it had yeah, to cover. Okay, yeah. okay. okay. Now Absolutely, sometime. because the yeah. first LED stent yeah. was the shorter one. Yeah, so we needed to full coverage. That was the whole point of Okay, good. I think the entire case was there. Yeah. Okay, now the dark. I and then care. they will show, the IVAS is ready in the end to show the uh, optimization. Okay. Hold it, so I see, yes. Okay, now some die. I think you're exactly okay, right good. there. Go up. Go up good. with us. Good. How high are you there? Down. Down. Go up again. 14. 14. Okay. Okay, down. Now, no need. I take this out. Little die. Good. Deploy the LED stand now. LED. You see that wire has been removed of the Go. D1 and now we are deploying the LED stand. And the key is always be careful that you may not be able to advance as I pointed out once you do the crash by D1 or D2. Mm -hmm. So Go. your position should 14, be right? yeah, perfect there. Down. Go up again. Now will be real yes, task sir. start 3, to 5, re 15. recrossing. Huh? Compliant, High right? High pressure yeah. for the LED. Down. You are compliant or no? No, for the compliant, for the diagonal. Yeah. So we first will need a compliant in both of them. Let's get a 2012 compliant for both, no? Let's take a picture here. Okay, and ready? Uh, yeah. Ready, go. Voila. All right, mission accomplished. That's what we announced it, and we are glad that we are able to do it. Now we, the real work starts now, recrossing without pushing too much wire because many times when you struggle with the wire, you have wire perforations and so, but the results have come as we predicted. So Anu, you want to tell us which wire and what you are going to use so that I can show my slide meanwhile? Which balloon, which wire we're going to use? Same Does she have a, a wire lecture also at the end today? Because there were some questions last time, which wire and so. Okay, let's use the same fielder wire. Okay, fielder wire and the first the compliant balloon to war. You want to do a LED first. Let me see how uh, it goes. 
Oh. Okay. So we can just meanwhile uh, once they are ready for. I uh, think I will need new wires. The balloon oh, actions here. Get a new wire. So we'll no, go no, th through, through, through this, and let's go to our uh, meanwhile recent international trials and publication. One is a core CTA trial, a two, then five, architect right? study, OCT Three, FFR trial, and pre-treatment with P2Y trial Three, five, inhibitor in STEMI. Give me a 3.5 and yeah. a 2. So then the focus review of the month is the impact of TLR on long-term mortality after left main PCI. Well, there was a data uh, of uh, from Excel trial that if you have a TLR, your mortality was three times higher compared to those who did not have TLR after left main PCI or cabbage or so. So basically, let's go to core CTA trial. Core CTA basically, remember we are talking about microvascular angina, uh, microvascular assessment. So invasive endotyping in patients with angina and no, no, ANOCA. So non-obstructive coronary disease called core CTA trial from Sweden, uh, funded by UK. And basically have the, remember four phenotypes which we had worked, vasospastic angina, microvascular angina, microvascular spasm, and finally normal test. So basically all require FFR, IFR, uh, and uh, giving acetylcholine and come up with the strategy. So basically uh, there was a trial called core MICA. Core MICA was defined after the angiogram normal non-obstructive CAD, then they had the interventional group of the microvascular assessment and not. Here they said, let's go back to the CTA, not in the cath lab, just like ischemia trial. Uh, so not courage, the ischemia that done in the outside. So here, CTA, you decide based on the CTA, angiogram, then intervention group versus control group, and intervention basically that you assess all these microvascular parameters and treat up appropriately compared to you let the control group do what need to be done. So this basically was the, the core CTA flow diagram, invasive coronary angiography in 250 patients, and then they had a microvascular assessment in 231 with vasospastic reactivity with acetyl choline, nitroglycerin, and intervention group was 115, other group was 116. So basically was that patients were tested, both of them, in half of them, they told the interventionist, so you know, this is your finding, you can change your Let's things. Go. And secondly, Thanks. control group was that you do what you're supposed to do. There are two outcomes. One was the primary outcome that what you thought so, and was the diagnosis changed after the uh, this assessment. And secondly was health questionnaire and the uh, Mackie of these patients. So this is basically was uh, the 55% patient had microvascular we angina, 11.7 had visual angina, 7.4% had both microvascular visuospastic yeah. and 26% has normal coronary function. Mean FFR was 0.88 uh, and so majority of were the LED. So very interesting yeah, here. See this now. Right? Post-randomization in the interventional group. Give the me. final diagnosis of microvascular angina much higher in the interventional group and change in the diagnosis almost in 41% of cases. So by intervention, you able to change the diagnosis and same visuospastic angina was much higher, change in diagnosis and mixed group also higher and non-cardiac chest pain, as you can see here, that final diagnosis of non-cardiac chest pain was more in the control group and we have more disease uh, cause of the chest pain as microvascular visuospastic angina, as you can see in the interventional group. Now, all having said that, post-physiology, post-randomization in the intervention. I just want you to concentrate that before the post-angiogram pre-randomization in interventional group only, you can see more patients got into the microvascular and visuospastic angina. You say, well, maybe because they did the testing and whatever it is, but that's what they found. Now, the bad news is we did that, but what did it do in terms of clinical event at one year? And this is a time when there was a COVID, not good follow-up, and so there was absolutely no difference in death MI stroke, which we knew, but more importantly, hospitalization with angina or chest pain was absolutely no difference in the intervention control group. So this was a little uh, disappointing, and same thing, so Seattle angina questionnaire was no difference between two groups, and oh, then lastly, oh. uh, total, that, uh, of course, uh, patients who have a, a more, better control of their risk group uh, particularly who are in the trial. So basically the message was patient with angina and no ANOCA, a diagnosis informed by invasive functional assessment had no effect on long-term angina burden and other symptoms and so. 
the second so this actually goes into this uh, from same investigator core ct and core mica core mica as i mentioned was the invasive but what they found today was in, in this uh, latest study that do you found more higher number of patients as you can see here with the overall uh, in terms of uh, visuospastic angina and microvascular plus visuospastic uh, angina together uh, so key is and then neither non cardiac was much higher so i think it is a little different but overall message is that it was no it did not impact the patient prognosis now second was uh, effect of elirocomb on atherosclerotic plaque volume architectural composition called architect from the spain and this basically they said that let's see by giving the just like our yellow three uh, which uh, dr kini did Go. so by giving uh, your p2y uh, by P pcsk9 inhibitor that what happens to the plaque uh, regression there she measured the whole the lipid r content and the, and the fibers kept thickness and in this particular case was they looked into the overall plaque burden so these are the patients so 104 patients and so they were analyzed and you basically see that baseline versus follow up the total plaque burden uh, mm -hmm. decreased the calcific plaque increased so remember this is clearly that what has shown the statin increase the calcium in the plaque so why then that makes it more stable and the yellow three showed you make a cap thickness and here fibro fatty plaque became as you can see here uh, from baseline and then the necrotic plaque were all decreased as you can see here uh, in patients with the uh, with therapy at follow up so seems to be the plaque became calcified and less necrotic core uh, as seen here so these are the some examples very clear so uh, and uh, now what was the correlate of plaque regression basically the total plaque burden to begin with and necrotic plaque those are the two most important factor um, and unstable core necrotic core and total plaque burden which led to the linear regression analysis and so so therefore Tell treatment with alorucam in addition balloon. to high intensity statin therapy might produce a spin, greater spin plaque burden like regression in patients with familial hypercholesteremia with higher baseline plaque burden and in those with large unstable core and of course uh, this is some basically same that we need to know what plaque give rise to trouble following up this was the oct combined oct ffr that patients you did a oct and diabetic patient and the key was if you medically treat this non ischemic thin cap fibrothroma tifa of uh, those who are ffr was negative so non ischemic so what happened to these patients and very interesting data the basically you compare patients who are ffr positive in less than 0.8 got the stent and you yeah. take ffr negative who has tifa look at the event rate is almost double in the tifa patient uh, with the ffr negative compared to where if you put a stent in the ffr positive patient so see basically the concept is is the plaque characteristics is determining the subsequent outcome of these patients so therefore the population with diabetes medical treated non ischemic tifa carrying mm -hmm. target lesions were associated with higher risk of recurring mm -hmm. uh, adverse cardiac event compared to target lesion that underwent complete revascularization opening the discussion about whether a focal preventive revascular strategy could be contemplated for highly vulnerable lesions and you know that combined oct ffr2 trial is ongoing to answer that question that those thin cap fibrothroma lesion should be treated versus you follow them medically the last study in this field is the p2 our our strategy of the pre treatment with p2y12 inhibitor as you know background p2y12 uh -huh. inhibitor used to be given for stable syndrome we had the pci cure trial and so and then came the acute coronary syndrome uh, and all those showed that pre treatment is no good rather it caused more bleeding so what about the STEMI patients and this is actually data from the burn pci registry few years ago the guideline did change that they opted they left it no longer like uh, that you have to give every new, case a p2y12 device. inhibitor for a stemi patient and they new. that's the change in the guideline is to in the sorry practice in uh, burn pci registry uh, in 2019 before that Don't everybody used to get pre treatment after that not getting pre treatment and basically what they found pre and post no different rather you see the the not recommended the, those had a lower event rate numerically but no p value difference and the individual endpoints was the cohort of one 
pre-treatment cohort to no pre-treatment and event rate was basically with a no pre-treatment was lower as you can see here and uh, those who actually got the drug still remain the benefit no difference whether you got a drug or not not only the strategy but even the drug itself and that lead to the similar outcome so basically not even higher bleeding so we said maybe bleeding will be more because there are data or and or lower stent thrombosis the pre-treatment but nothing happened because atlantic trial by giving the uh, press uh, ticagrelor or in the emerge in the ambulance had a lower stent thrombosis like 0.08 uh, in those patients but i think overall turns out to be no difference at present with the pre-treatment strategy so this basically puts together in a nice uh, central figure that uh, pre-treatment is no longer must Sometimes. now it's still recommended yeah, by the guidelines that you should do a pty trial particularly in the STEMI patient in non-STEMI you wait for the angiogram but STEMI patient you do it accordingly uh, so, therefore, in this cohort study of patient STEMI undergoing primary PCI, P2 vitoil inhibitor treatment was not associated with improved MACI. The last one is our uh, focus review is the impact of TLR after left main PCI. The data from the Seoul okay, Korea the with the four studies because they are master in the left main, IRS DES, IRS, IRIS main, yeah. main compare and pre-combat. All those trials of having both DES and some of them bare metal stent comparison and they took the patients yeah, only the with the DES yeah, the and, uh, so and followed uh, uh, and of course uh, up to 10 year follow up. Uh, eligible patients were 1397. TLR occurred in about 10% of cases, 10.8% of cases and no TLR in remaining. And they analyzed the patients based on the time interval and impact of TLR in terms of mortality. As I said, there is a prelude to it. Excel trial showed that if you have a TLR in left main patients, whether cabbage or PCI, cabbage had lower TLR compared to PCI, but once you have TLR, there is almost 3% higher mortality at three year follow up. So this basically led to here, you see that red bar is the TLR in early stage, they call within two years, and then remaining that even after two years, some number, a small percentage TLR continues to occur, making it cumulative 10.8% in you 10 years. So just to say LED. that even LED. after two years, the left main PCI, there is some TLR will continue to occur. Mm -hmm. The second point, uh, oh. the no TLR, TLR, various differences, there was no difference in individual must. endpoints. And you have multiple more vessel disease, of course, they will have a more TLR, 20. but syntax score was not, in, not predictive of the TLR, but distal bifurcation lesion was predictive of TLR uh, as shown in this slide. So then the question mm -hmm. was, that which patient had two stent technique versus one stent. When you have two stent, you have higher TLR because there were more complex cases and there were more final kissing balloon dilatation. As you know, in this study, almost 90% of patients yeah, got yeah. the IVAS. So, so basically, uh, this is imaging guided uh, follow-up from the Korea. So what was the outcome? All-cause mortality and cardiac death, oh, exactly have? identical at 10 years, whether you have TLR or no TLR. And uh, so clearly as shown uh, oh. with these uh, plots. Now, also we learned that Go the COVID no. mortality after left main PCI, that what predicts the mortality Go after up. the left main PCI? It's no clinical factor, no diabetes, no your acute coronary syndrome, age, okay, uh, anything else. Nothing was predictive. Only predictive was your stent technique. So two stent technique was associated with a lower mortality compared to one stent because complex lesion, you, you one stent probably was not good. You the two stent, you're associated with a lower mortality as shown here. Very, very important finding that therefore the two stent approach in my opinion with the left main, that's what we have been teaching is the right approach. So this basically puts it together. The 10.8% had a TLR, 61.9% uh, were early, means within two years, 38% happened after two years. And in the bottom, whether you're two years or after two years, there was no impact on mortality. Same thing on the right side with the landmark analysis. Also, what we learned is that mechanism of TLR, it's by and large the intimal hyperplasia in 70% of cases. Now, there are some cases where you stand under expansion and particularly those who had within 12 months, I mean two, two years, uh, within 24 months, there were a higher chance of stand under expansion. So under expansion comes early in terms of TLR. Later on, it's all intimal hyperplasia as shown here. 
So this to sum it up, although the incident okay, ischemia so driven TLR was com most common within two years after left main PCI, TLR occurred steadily oh. during the 10 year follow up period. However, given that such patients were optimally revascularized, the prognostic impact of TLR on okay, mortality no. was not substantial as shown in this study, contradictory of your Excel trial data. So therefore, basically that comes out to be if the TLR is not causing mortality, do you really need to have uh, as a most important surrogate marker of any of the trials that has been under question? So with that note, let's go to the angiogram. Let's see what uh, Anu has done so far. Let's show the angio now. Okay, Anu, tell us where are you? We're still trying to... The Corsair. If anywhere there is a trouble, use Corsair. The Corsair makes through those uh, small holes. So we, go, we knew that recrossing will be the big challenge in this particular case. What about D1? Were you able to open the D2 or no? We are still in D1. I, see. I think this probably was the most challenging recrossing and all that. But people no, but use it. Corsair. Corsair will open the stress. No, 1.2 balloon. No, crossing with the wire. They should have No, seen. no, I know. But I'm saying is Corsair will open the strut and then you'll do subsequently easy. No, we were done with 1.2 balloon. I'm saying if they are to watch live, this probably was the most yeah, interesting part. Okay. Show it now. Yeah. No, what's the point now? Okay. Okay, get the LED balloon, right? Okay, give me the... There many people have continued to discuss uh, whether go. you are uh, going to go, go to the diagonal uh, in the proximal part of the strut or uh, distal go up, part. Go uh, go suggestions ahead. also by Dr. Mahmoud El Rais, I think from go Egypt. Uh, whether you would have considered yes. a ping pong technique for the simultaneous deployment okay, of D1, D2. No, how can you have been done simultaneous? You needed nine, nine French guys. Remember, you could not have put a three, this is three sun, stand uh, simultaneously. This is right? So right uh, now we have done D1, D2, the dilatation. Yeah. Uh, the question always comes is that, the, I mean, kind of it's a modified ping pong, you can call it. First we put a D2, then we put a D1 and so. So question is, the limited with the seven French, we have done the kissing balloon dilatation. Uh, and now we are ready to uh, go to the D, uh, D2. Uh. So D1, we had to do 1.25 balloon, then 2O balloon, and then uh, go to the 2 sand 5. Okay. And then same 2 sand 5, we went up to 20 atmospheres. Uh, now we'll try to go to the D. Let's see, hopefully this should, we should be able to cross easy. Yeah, so not easy. crossing will be, definitely will be a, you know. We say you cross where well, your optimal uh, cell is. Yeah. Not proximal or distal. So, so I know, so whole question comes to the proximal versus distal. That uh, now there's some data have shown that if you go proximal in the mini crush, you deform the uh, ostium. But uh, to me, I think you just go with the middle. You know, you be happy. In these cases, you are able to cross, cross and finish it in time. Uh, I don't think we need to get uh, too crazy about which cell you went. In the, uh, the DK crush, you want to go to the proximal cell. And I think it's a lot of theoretical aspects of those. Uh, but go to mean, maybe you need Theoretical a Theoretical aspect yeah. not done in uh, vivo, but all yeah. vitro. Yeah. Okay, good. So you get your same 1.5 balloon again? Uh, yeah. Let's see. Two yeah, go with the 1.5 balloon. No, it will be, that will be the only way. Yeah, 1, 2, 5, whatever that you had. So we are not taking the picture of okay. the after that yet. So that's fine. But let's open. The, the anytime you is... have a difficulty, just uh, I'm telling you that use Corsair or these pointed uh, I never use Corsair until your 1O balloon has failed. Yeah, your 1O balloon is our first approach. I agree, yes. fully agree. Don't uh, go to Corsair di di directly because yeah. you can distort uh, the stent struts. Okay, so now we are going with the one point. What balloon is it? 1.25 uh, Sprinter Legend. Okay, and then we'll take a 2.5 balloon, right? We have yeah, it. Two yeah, five. we have it. I don't 2. know. 2.5 balloon may before. go or no. So we even tried anchor with yeah. the. LED, when we went to D1, we even tried anchor, even then the balloon would yeah. not go.
Yeah, I think this one anchor will be okay after you make negative. If you use this balloon, you have to go negative first. Negative. Give me the. Okay, give me LED. I have right. Or yeah, I can go anchor. Except that's a 12 balloon. We may be a little distal and not even that. It's a 35. We may get have a. So when you're anchoring and if you're going outside the stent length, okay, go there. Low pressure, okay. Eight, three, five. Okay, yes. And you can get a new 1.512 also if needed. Okay, good. Good went in anyway. Yeah. See that anchor technique. Uh, so it helps quite a bit in many of these cases. Yeah, negative LED. Okay, go up with the diag. Yeah, we don't need the other one. We need a 2.5 balloon now. Okay, so go mean up with the for yeah. recrossing uh, several questions regarding yeah. preference Down. of hydrophilic versus hydrophilic. non -hydrophilic. hydrophilic. 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 Yeah. Get a 2.5 balloon here. Okay, go up here. High pressure. 18, go 20. 20 atmosphere. You'll break it there. The hydrophilic go always up. much, much uh, uh, yes, down. better in every way. But have to be careful that it doesn't, go up, one, go up here. Uh, that doesn't dissect. 20. Secondly, the distal wire tip does not cause perforation. Yes. 20? Good. Yeah, good. And this is ready. 2.5 yes. balloon is ready okay, now. Okay, down. So, Samin, mm -hmm. a quick trivia question, which I think you'll get it immediately right. Uh, which metropolitan city in the world has the most cath labs? <laughs> metropolitan city? Will it be Chicago? No, no, no. In no. the world. Uh, I mean, in the I, world? Oh, somewhere yeah, in, in China? World. In no, the world. No, 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 no. It's very closer to, to, to our homes. Yes, yeah. yeah. New Delhi has 220 cath labs. How about that? Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> 220 cath labs. <laughs> so I asked somebody, I said, yeah. what do you do? Cath each other? <laughs> 220 cath labs in New Delhi. Unbelievable. Remove the other balloon. Where did you get the number? Well, I, I have sources and pretty accurate. Not much wow. doubt. That could be. I mean, I believe that it is possible. Not much doubt, but uh, because uh, yeah, because remember there uh, every even in the Jaipur, I mean, place like Jaipur, we already have like 26 cath labs. Okay, yeah. everyone in a small nursing home, they just put a machine because it's like go, 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 easy. Go, go. What quality work they are doing and not, it's go, go. a totally different story. Go, 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 go. But Leave it's it. just a you know, we have to go negative with the balloon. Okay, yeah, good. good. Okay, down. You know, probably the. Regulations are, uh, you know, and uh, a lot of this information was provided to me by Diag people working at the Medical mm. Council of India. Yeah, and and guess what? In the entire New York State, we have 69 cath labs. Down. Right. 69. One time was 72 because the the STEMI alone they were in the next. There were 69 cath labs in the entire New York State. Now okay. this in Chicago. There are uh, 68 cath labs in Chicago, Eight. zip code. Mm. Okay. But I don't think anywhere else there are more than in America. Okay. I would say down. Chicago probably has the highest number of cath labs from the city point of view. That news too was a surprise yeah. for me. Uh, Samin, more a question. Uh, yeah. The need for a pot before recrossing? Yeah, okay. that's a very good point. So question is Ready? pot versus no pot and we, the paper will be coming out uh, this week which we have done, the pot indicated in left main, everywhere else is just a, a good done without any clinical evidence. So title is, the pot is the common practice without any clinical data to support. So now we in the non-left main, our recommendation is no pot. Just do the kissing balloon is good enough. The, and we, we actually can, have our we data. We can show you right now, I was. Yeah. And our, our data, data have shown have. that also, uh, the publication that you have a, with the pot versus a, a kissing balloon, you have more spherical, less uh, stand malopposition uh, by using the, uh, the kissing balloon dilatation rather than pot. So in the end, we definitely will do a pot. Some people do a pot, repot, kissing, and not needed, believe me. Kissing balloon is good enough in a left main pot, yes. And see that beautiful results. Give me the, give me the run through. Yeah. So I mean, uh, in, the, in the meantime, my yeah. my comment on uh, the busiest uh, and the number of cath labs has uh, 
uh, generated several comments, including a very nice one by Dr. Jha that uh, uh, Delhi is, of course, the referral area for the entire North India, which completely makes sense too. Thank you, Nikhil, and uh, thank you for your comments uh, right through the discussion today. Uh, uh, to all of you who have posted uh, numerous uh, technical tips, uh, questions, uh, thank you for keeping our uh, discussion so lively. Okay. I know what I'm doing now. Well, I was. No, somewhat... I was. I was. Okay. Yes. They're just going to show the I was, and let's see the I was, and then I'll finish my uh, take-home message and the three questions, okay. and uh, we're reaching to our uh, point. Some die. Oh, we intend to die. Yeah, that's a mid. Remember, there is a moderate lesion in the mid, which we are not tackled. Yeah, it's going to the diag now. No, no, it's not diag. It's the LED. Uh -huh. It's the mid LED. It's a small branch. Okay, some die. See that it's going into that small diag. You will die. See that. <laughs> Yeah. I think just do the half if you need to do. No, the okay. Now we are good. Good. Give me the eyes. Okay. Okay, key key. Yes, ready. Good. Yeah. So the bring the eyes on the main screen, but everybody has seen the results. Excellent results of the two mini crush technique, and we we stood by our statement of this particular case and uh, excellent. So you have to be careful, it's broken. Your yeah, first case is done or still there? PCI? Yeah. <clears throat> okay, Kiski, ready? Okay. Crystal yep. edge? Check them. Image, okay, start. It's native, it's coming back. Okay. Yeah. No vessel. Yeah, yes. perfect landing zone. No dissection, no malabsorption, great sizing. Better expanded. Nice area. So here come the D2. Yeah, this is a D2. Yeah, looks uh, very open, the side launch. Now uh, this is a septal, kind of elliptical, but looks good area. Yeah, this is a D1. Mm -hmm. And nicely opposed. Yeah, on the plug, but no malapposition. Yeah, yeah and nice started. circular lumen. That's a yeah. believer of the pot R that they make circular lumen rather yeah. than kissing, which is wrong, wrong, wrong. Mm -hmm. All just done by the theory, not in the practical. So great results. Let's go to our completion of our presentation. And then we will show some, uh, uh, Anu wanted to show uh, uh, some cases, you know, of the wiring. So basically take home message, invasive functional Energy assessment in no obstructive CAD, no good, uh, no data to support. <clears throat> Second, no, what happened here? Yeah, the <clears throat> Elurocubab for plaque, burden regression and changes, yes, that how the plaque decreases. Then higher mace in medically treated FFR negative, tick fine diabetic, yes. So these are the focus for subsequent intervention. And then lastly, policy of P2I12 inhibitor pretreatment is STEMI patient, no good. No benefit and, uh, and of course, not even any decrease in uh, bleeding. So incidence of TLR at 10 years after left vein PCI is occurs in about 10% of cases, with majority occurring in the first two years, and majority received re-PCI. Cabbage occurred in about like the 22% of cases, 78% got the re-PCI. Two-stent technique and file casing balloon inflations were the only independent predictor uh, associated with TLR with no impact of baseline clinical and procedural factors on TLR, including diabetes. Lastly, occurrence of TLR did not adversely impact the mortality at 10 year follow up, irrespective of the early, less than two years or more than two years. Hence, optimal left main PCI is a must, and two stent technique actually had a lower mortality as shown uh, in that study. So, questions. Uh, following statement is false regarding the results of the core CTA trial of ANOCA and microvessel assessment in the intervention versus control group. Similar unplanned hospital admission in intervention group. Similar MI rates in the intervention group. Improved or lower cardiac events in the intervention group. Higher visuospastic angina in the intervention group. And similar angina episode in the intervention group. So basically C, improved or lower cardiac events in the intervention group. Answer is no. It was similar uh, between two groups. Second. Following statements are correct regarding the results of P2Y12 inhibitor treatment in uh, STEMI as per burn PCI registry, except 
no difference in MACE, no difference in MI, there is no difference in death rates, similar stent thrombosis rate, and higher bleeding in the pretreatment versus no pretreatment group, which was there in the early studies, but in the current age, no difference in the higher bleeding, largely because many of them done by the radial intervention. Then, following statement is false regarding the results of a recent pool analysis evaluating the impact of TLR on long-term mortality after left main PCI. There is higher incidence of TLR in less than two years versus more than two years. Occurrence of TLR did not adversely impact long-term mortality. TLR is more common after two stent versus one stent group. And the two stent technique was independently associated with higher mortality versus one stent technique. And intimal hyperplasia remains the most common mechanism of TLR. Answer there is no. D, two stent technique was associated with lower mortality versus one stent technique, as you can see. So with that note, I complete here. And now I'll ask Anu to talk about, uh, to, uh, about the wiring. Uh, go back to the slide. Yeah, so you have this, you started with this case, subtotal occlusion. Yeah, that was the last uh, month's case. Okay, so this one, yeah. Yeah, last month, the mid-RCA. Yeah, yeah. No. The, la, the CTO that we did, mid-RCA. So we had initially started with Fielder, and then we tried Gaia 3, then went to Miracle. I think Gaia 3, where we felt, I felt that we probably went subintimal. Then finally, you know how we got into the Intima was by using a, a Mongo wire. If you, rem if you remember all the steps, so Fielder, Gaia 3, Miracle, and then was a Mongo, and this was the, you know, use Guideliner, and subsequently we put a 248 stents. This was from the last uh, month's case. So we, uh, we wanted to discuss the wire at that time and then because of the time we had uh, stopped short. Even today we'll I think try to go uh, early, I mean faster, which is now, uh, what is Gladys Mongo? If you see, this is one of the Ashahi wires uh, that has been uh, there for a while. So there are two, one is just a straightforward uh, Gladys Mongo, other one is uh, extra support. If you see what it is, it's tip load about three and uh, not tapered. Uh, polymer jacket, entire uh, wire, as well as uh, it is coated in the tip. So why was this uh, Mongo wire made? This is, I think I went through it, and it comes 19300. So this is what the reason for uh, the Mongo wire. That means it is able to prolapse. You can see on the left-hand side, even if after it prolapses, then it's able to keep the tip. So it can sm uh, do a small knuckle and prolapse into the subintima, exactly the reason why that wire was used in the distal RCA. You go into the subintima, small, it small, makes small knuckle, you go through the subintima and then you are able to come back into the true lumen. And when it comes back into the true lumen, if you see the other wires, which is, uh, you know, an example they have given, is a pilot wire where when you do that kind of a prolapse, small uh, knuckle, one, you cannot do it small, and other, when it comes out, it loses the tip. But this does not lose the tip. But uh, which, you, which one do you use, MG or ES? Which one do you use uh, on the Mongo, in our cat lab? MG. MG. MG, okay. Yeah. ES is extra support, we yeah. don't use it. We, we only know. carry one. one. Okay. And that's the one, and we only carry 190 yeah. and just to go over a Gaia 3 I think which we have mentioned multiple times the difference is that it's a, a tapered tip um, and I'll tell you a little bit more about it uh, we have Gaia 3 uh, next 3 so what is the thing about this uh, core to tip you see that for increased uh, penetration it is tapered which is very good and more important why uh, you when you use a Gaia one to one torque is there and the biggest reason why this works that way is because of the X-strand coil. So this is the technology they talk about that it is an X-strand coil. What is X-strand is that you have the core in the center, which is a unicore, which most of the wires, current new wire generation wires, everybody's unicore. And then you have that uh, uh, little uh, blue one, which you see there, which is uh, only the uh, seen in the, this wire, but the X strand is the outer spring coil. Each coil is also twisted. You see that multiple uh, 
twist in that and because of that there is increased ten uh, tensile strength so when you go through the cto even if it gets stuck and you want to pull back you see that there is some kind of a tensile strength that you see in that and then the blue one is called as uh, act one and the act one you see both in ashahi as well as in uh, mongo so that is a coil between the core and the outer spoil spring for again same torque response and durability durability means that the tip is maintained when you are going through the cto wires so now let us compare the two which is uh, gaia as well as mongo you see it has act one and uh, gaia has both act one as x strand and we said what, what is uh, the x strand x strand is a twisted wire which increases the tensile strength and able to go through the cto so if you see what happens to the spring coil of the mongo is very short and because since it is short you are able to prolapse this this is an, uh, sim another wire where completely there is no act one at all just the spring coils are there give you example comparison between the two if you see there mongo tip load is 3 not tapered 0.014 rounded tip now both are hydrophilic as well as uh, uh, you know you have slippery but uh, gaia the tip is uncoated since the tip is uncoated you have a good tactile feeling uh, there is no polymer jacket on gaia but there is a polymer jacket in a uh, mongo and of course the biggest thing when you say gaia use the word x strand x strand coil means those multiple coils that are there and if you see that the tip of the mongo is only 8.5 millimeter coil that's why you are able to prolapse with the smaller uh, uh, i would say a knuckle you are able to make a small knuckle able to prolapse and go through the subintimal spray so in summary you can see that propent is uh, propent prop Propensity to penetrate and go subintimal is higher with Gaia, which we saw in that case. We went subintimal probably through the Gaia. He has more tactile feedback because you have tip is uncoated, hydrophobic. So Mongo is slippery, less traumatic. You make a smaller knuckle and less resistance. So go through the subintimal space and then come back to the intima. So this was a summary of that case, why, which wire was used. And this is the final result. And you can see that I was, there was a question whether we were in the true lumen or no. With I was, we showed that we were in the true lumen. Oh, Thank no. you. Fascinating and extremely valuable yeah. tips uh, for the use of Mongo, Gaia 3 and the techniques. Uh, uh, Samin, our uh, remark about uh, the cath lab uh, density has generated uh, <laughs> incredible interest. Uh, one of the relevant uh, I can read to you is uh, Dr. Gopi Krishna from Telangana, mm -hmm. who said that in a small district of Nizamabad, uh, again, uh, many cath labs are not following any AERB guidelines, that he says in a small area there are 12 cath labs. So fascinating discussion. Uh, I'll have some follow-up questions. Uh, there have been some comments regarding uh, the use of uh, P2Y inhibitors in the cath lab for uh, in the ER for the uh, STEMI cases, but I think that's a topic by itself. Uh, I want to thank our audience. Uh, uh, Samin and Anu, great case selection today. Uh, I mean, it was a vision to understand how much uh, interest that would generate. Uh, we stop here and we'll see you next time on March the 19th. Beautiful. Thank you.